Ireland. Ireland used to be known for two things. It used to be known for people, bricklayers, construction workers, who would go to England to lay brick, and drunks, right? People would, in Ireland, drink all the time. Yes, that's what this country is known for. And it was the poorest country in Europe for a very, very long time. This was a desperate place. But Ireland decided in the 1980s it needed to do something. And it set up this statement. And the big statement was basically they needed to innovate. They needed to sell one thing, the minds of their people. So they went on this big mission to educate their people, and to change their infrastructure, to create an economic plan for the future, right? That would make their people wealthy people. And they focused on some certain areas. They focused on biotech, high tech, software, and gaming, and, pharma and pharmaceutical manufacturing. And they decided they would provide the best employees to these kind of businesses so they could bring them to Ireland. And they also decided that the Irish themselves would create these kind of businesses to compete all over the world. And they worked on it and worked on it from the 1980s up. And suddenly, wow, that slide went quick. Ireland is now the richest uh, nation in Europe. Singapore, known for malaria, but they created this incredible economic plan. And it's called the Singapore Model. And the Singapore Model basically says, we're going to out-educate everyone in the world. We will attract the most high-tech kind of businesses to our country. And by doing that, we'll make an incredible per capita income. And where they ended up with that is they make $50,000 per pack, per person, in their country. They're one of the wealthiest countries per person. And they have some of the most incredible industries. They're considered number one uh, in, in innovation in the world, more than the United States, more than France, more than England. They are a powerhouse. This is New Zealand. New Zealand in the 1950s is very good. Third highest uh, per capita a uh, 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 lifestyle. But then they went into this big dip because their only relationship and trade was with England. And England became part of the EU and it no longer worked anymore. And they suddenly became this poor nation in the 1970s. They had high unemployment, the government didn't work, the government hired everyone. One third of employees were government employees. And they basically fell off this cliff suddenly. I mean, the nation went into, the nation 23 years in deficit, right? This was a disaster nation. But they focused, they decided we're going to innovate. And we're going to innovate in farm technology particularly. And we're going to create a fiscal responsibility act to run our government like a business. We're going to run our education system as if it's a business and hold everyone accountable. And the result has been that this country now has about $31,000 per person. They live a great lifestyle now because they innovated. They decided they were going to make their money off of their minds. All of those countries, islands of 4 million people. And here we are, the last island of 4 million people, $19,000 per cap. What's wrong with us? Those people learned it from us, from Operation Bootstrap in the 1940s and 50s and 60s. But something happened that we got left behind. <laughs> but it's not because of a lack of talent, by the way. This is the maglev train. This train floats on magnets. The technology for it, designed by a Puerto Rican from Dalva. He's not even an engineer. He's a tinkerer that in his retirement decided to do that. He still lives here today. China and Japan are fighting to be the first ones to have a whole system of these trains, right? How many of you know of NASA? Small little organization of 181 Puerto Ricans, and they're not the Sofna Botes. They're all coming out of Maya West in the Politecnica, and they're running the biggest projects in NASA. They are the ones who do some of the most incredible things with solar sails and with the guidance systems, right? The Mars mission, the day they land a man on Mars instead of put a Puerto Rican flag. Because the people who are in charge of the program are Puerto Ricans. And when I say Puerto Ricans, I don't say mean New York Ricans. I mean Puerto Ricans educated in Maya West who went there and took the job away from someone from MIT. That's talent. We have the talent. This guy right here, he created this. He created the tsunami shelter. Now Northrop Grumman wants to finance him to create it. It would have saved hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lives. 
during the big tsunamis in Asia and in Japan, right? He's from here. He's not even an engineer. He's a contractor. And by the way, I can tell you, he's got no help from our government, right, to do this. But everybody else's government would love to work with him. And what do all these countries have then that we don't have? They focused on innovation. They understood that their countries were not going to survive by manufacturing cheaper, providing cheaper labor. They understood it was going to depend on creating an economy where people created ideas that people wanted to buy for a lot of money. It was about unleashing the brains of a nation. And when you're a small nation and you're an island, you can't sell huge tracts of land or mining rights. You have to focus on your people. They are 4 million people islands. And so are we. This used to be us, but it's not so much us anymore. And there's so much opportunity out there. We could be the leaders in underwater electrical air, air production. And do you really think the United States is going to have engineers from China, maybe it's predator drones? We could be doing that. All of these trends that are out there are right. Nanotechnology. We could be the leaders in all these things if we were just to create a plan, a long-term plan that we all stuck to, that created an educational system that created an isla de ideas, a government that thought about innovation, an entire island that valued people who create things. There's two people in this room right now who have patents. They're very rare. But Dorico's only produced a little bit of over 700 patents ever. If we want more people to produce patents, we need to become an isla de ideas. Thank you very much.